Welcome to the third section of the course. In the previous section, we looked at managing, finding and working with containers. In this section, we'll be learning how to programmatically make or build container images. In this video, we're going to introduce you to the Docker file. Manually, interactively making containers can be a pain, especially if you need to do it often or in multiple places. Docker addresses this by providing a Docker file format that lets you define how to make a Docker container. Docker can then build a container from that file in the same way no matter what environment. Let's do this with our SSH server container from before. When we make a Docker file, it's best to create it inside a directory. This is often the project directory for the container. It's important to do this because of various conventions in the Docker ecosystem. We'll learn about later. So to start, let's create a directory for our new Docker image project. Inside, we'll make a file called Docker file. You can name it anything, but it makes more sense to name it Docker file so people know what it is and to follow conventions used by other tooling. We'll edit the Docker file with Vim. The format of the Docker file is simple. It's simply a list of instructions, like a script. Each instruction has a keyword in all capital letters. The first one we'll use is from. From always goes at the top of the file and we use it to specify the base image we want to use for this container. Here we'll use Ubuntu as we have been. Under from, it's best practice to specify an author or owner of this container using the maintainer instruction. It takes a name and email address in standard email format. Now the interesting instructions. The main instruction is run. This is the equivalent of us loading bash and interactively running a command. Here I'm running two commands in one. I do this to group significant operations into the same layer, since each run instruction produces a new layer. I'll also make the slash var slash run directory SSH needs. There are other instructions, but we'll explore them in future videos. Now we can build this Docker file using the docker build command. It takes the path or URL of the project directory containing a Docker file. Hence the importance of naming it Docker file and having it in a directory. When the Docker build finishes, it will have produced an image but it won't have a name, just an ID. So we usually always use the dash T option of Docker build to specify an image repository name to use with the resulting image. Then, as I said before, we pass it in the path to the Docker file project, in this case, the current directory. As you can see now, we have an image that has the SSH server package installed. Docker file makes an already quick process even quicker, and introduce the concept of source files for containers. We'll expand on this concept as the section progresses. In the next video, we'll examine how to add files to your new container.